for today's first application, it is an automotive application. But before I jump into the application, we'll just jump over to the 3D scanners slide. So for this one, um, I believe that the uh, application was a handheld scanner, which would be along the lines of one of these guys right here, something like this, or this one, or this one. We got a whole passel of uh, handheld scanners here on screen. Um, so as many of you know, the handheld scanners are great because they're very flexible that you can take the scanner to the part and scan on location. That is true for most 3D scanners, but just to a different degree with uh, handheld scanners, there's just an extra sense of mobility there that you can grab less equipment and less setup time um, depending on what you're trying to scan and how you're scanning and which uh, devices that you use that are available. Um, so for today's, it was a handheld scanner, which we scanned an automotive part. And in this case, it is a hood scoop or a hood bonnet or a vent for a automotive vehicle. And it's another great example of uh, 3D scan data that's captured from an automotive uh, perspective. And automotive is huge for aftermarket parts, right? So aftermarket automotive is just a huge market segment for 3D scanning and reverse engineering, being able to create customized uh, parts for a variety of different applications, whether it's performance improvements like this one could be a performance improvement. Sometimes it's an aesthetic where you're just changing the way the vehicle looks. Um, other times it's a functionality thing um, where you're actually making something that mates to the vehicle uh, as an add-on to the vehicle to add sensors or cell phone mounts or all kinds of different applications there. Um, but I like to just highlight all the different, you know, reasons for uh, the 3D scanning. Um, so as you can see here, we captured the 3D scan data, beautiful looking 3D scan data, and you can make aftermarket parts. As you can see down below, there is one where they uh, changed it to a carbon fiber uh, piece there. Um, sometimes it's even modifications to the vehicle, right? Like if you've changed something about the engine or the location of something that you need to make a modification to the part so it connects in where it use, used to connect before. Um, but with that, let's go ahead and jump over to the Design X product and we'll roll back through the history. All right. So here is... Design X, and here is the final part, surface model here. Just rotating around so you can see that. Here is the scan data. We'll just turn off the, uh, there we go. So there's our beautiful scan data and the surface model. So we'll go and roll back here. So you'll see the first step we take is rolling forward and creating a, uh, 3d sketch here and i'll go ahead and turn on that 3d sketch and roll through here and show this but this is just an excellent example of taking this scan data and drawing a 3d mesh sketch all over the surface of it and maintaining all these square side surface patches here and extracting from that all of the different surfaces from it. Um, so you can see here that there's lots of different surfaces in these boundaries. And let's talk about that real quick. So as you can see, the history tree on this one is quite short because it is mainly like a hybrid surface model where we're going to extract surfaces using the uh, boundary fit right here, which is one of my favorite tools. I think I mentioned that before. 
and then adding features here afterwards. Uh, but what I wanted to do is just take a moment to show how this stuff was collected here and how it, how it was created. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that 3D sketch and just go into some of the tools that are available within the 3D mesh sketch, um, you know, to show how the person approached this. So if I come in and create a 3D mesh sketch, you'll see here are all the different types of tools that we have in here. And without a doubt, the first one that you'll notice and one that I've covered here on this uh, webinar before is just drawing a spline on the mesh. This is super valuable to be able to do where I can say, I want to draw a mesh and let's go ahead and refit that. I don't know if I clicked off screen there and I can draw, just click and draw on the surface here. So this is how this was approached. Uh, now, what I just did, that specific rib, they did something else I'll show here in a second. But this is just the generic idea here of how this part was created where you can come in and create these patches. And you see here, I went too far over there. So if I, if I wanted to, I could just do this. not do that there we go and I gotta get back into the tool like so let's just do that and draw my boundaries on here like this. And I think we talked about this before. If I get out of here, I can come over to add-ins, boundary fit, fit the surface here. Just hit next. I want to fit a surface. Boom, boom, boom. We got a surface there. And we're done. So now let's go ahead and um, get rid of this guy. And go right back into that sketch and just show some of the other methods for creating curves and patches and all this on here so one of them is section and this is one that they almost definitely used on this um, so if i just align myself to the part from the different viewpoints here and i just draw on screen like this and i'm holding shift and then if i don't hold shift I can do this and draw at different angles like this. So I think this is the primary way that they did this. And then they came back with tools like I did before. And you see here, I can snap directly to that and divide this up here like so and then come back and draw these curves. And then because this is a high curvature area too, I want it to have its own surface like that. And then, so that's, uh, we covered manual drawing of splines. We covered uh, creating sections. Obviously mirroring is, is obvious. I could just say mirror these splines across the center. Um, then creating um, splines from the boundaries. So if I just click on that boundary and I can tell it how smooth and then just hide the mesh here, you can see create a boundary curve. Now that is of course important. It's going to fit boundary curves around and then um, I obviously would start the smartest thing would be to do that at the beginning because then I could come back and do that later on. I would have to come back and do that later on where I kind of snap these guys to that boundary later. Oops, I just click and drag the other one. Um, so I would probably want to do the boundaries first um, and then do my sections and then do my manuals from there. Um, so those are some of the uh ideas here converting entities from other sketches 
So if I had drawn a manual cross section uh, here earlier in the history tree, so if I did a 2D cross section, I could come in and say convert entities from that 2D cross section into my 3D sketch here and utilize them in here, which is super valuable too. Um, and then trace feature line um, where I can come in and say I want to trace this feature line here. And you'll see that it will create, based on curvature, it'll create a curve. And you can say I want it to be more or less smooth. And it's pretty crazy how how this works. So if you see here, I change those. And then when I'm done, I could just take that um, curve. And if I wanted to mess with it more, one another way I could smooth it out too is use the smooth tool. And I could say I want to smooth that curve out. And then another thing I could do to smooth it is just change the resolution of it. So if I click on this curve here and it says it's got 56 nodes here, I could say make it with 20. So now look, at it's got 20. Oops. And then I could always, you know, I'm using that as an opportunity to... Uh, to smooth it so what i could do is then reselect it and stop dragging it around uh, and then come over here and say 20 and then just jump right back up to like 30. so what the 20 does is it like reduces it down and then i could immediately just bump it right back up if i needed a little more resolution to the curve itself um, and then you have the ability here, you see that it, it created the splits right there. If I wanted to split it here, I can split it there and split it here um, to change my splits and where those are. And the reason why that comes into play is like if I were trying to do four-sided, right, I could come in here now and draw this out of the middle here, if this was the route I was gonna go, right? I'm just showing the tools available for your uh, util utilization here to where you can you know, edit this curve, reduce the number of nodes, bring it back up, um, smooth it out, use all of these different extraction. We, we use the trace feature line. Um, you know, uh, you see here that we also have the uh, ability to extract the UV curves from a surface, um, the intersection between solid bodies. I could also project curves on a target entity. Um, so you have all these different options and I'm sure I'll cover more of these in future webinars, but I really wanted to like each time we show an example, and if it is an example like this one, where some of the functionality is similar to of what we've talked about before, you know, dive a little deeper and show some more of the tools and how they work in the process of rolling back through the history tree. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that sketch altogether. And you'll see that after they drew that, we'll go ahead and turn the surface on and then the mesh off, it's like, whoa, we almost modeled the whole stinking part in into one here. So now we created this, this part and we extracted all those surfaces. And then now we go ahead and we create some region groups. And you see here, we'll roll forward it looks to me like they probably utilized the uh, wizards here, the loft wizard, extrusion wizard, that sort of thing. So we'll turn on the mesh, turn on the regions. So you see these regions? If I see regions, most likely what we did is we selected that and came over to revolution wizard and said, I wanted to do, give me a solid insert, or it can, or even uh, give me a surface. And if I hit next, 
you'll see it's going to look at that and it's going to draw a surface for me. Let me just go ahead and turn that on, turn this off. And we did it as a surface, so you can see the difference of mine. And you'll see here that it created that as a separate surface. And the beautiful thing, I know I've talked about this before here on the on the channel, that these can be edited. So now I can come over here and go ahead and turn these all off. Well, any day now, I'll turn them all off. And then I can come in and use tools like I'll just use the um, tangent curve and just you know maybe extend it past I'm not doing this exact obviously and and then I could also come over here and extend this past too like that just to show I edited those and turned the surfaces on and we'll turn um, so when I did that, we made enough change to it. It needs me to reselect the chain. Um, so you can see here that I went ahead and uh, I went past the center line. So it's it's yelling at me there because it's going to create intersecting geometry, which is a great little tip there to show that if you go past, um, we'll go ahead and do a uh, power trim here because I wasn't paying attention. And I'm, I'm just talking and narrating there. Uh, I could add tangency so it doesn't have that little bump there, but you see here how I went in and I edited it and made a surface myself, and all of it is editable, where I could even come in here and say, I want to edit it, change it to a both directions one, right, and not go all the way around. Right, and made a change there. Not that that would be a good idea. I'm just showing you that you can do that. Um, so we'll go ahead and get rid of mine. And toggle forward here. So they went ahead and created those. And they use the surface to uh, cut that. And then they're using it to trim in. And then now we're going to go ahead and fill it between the two. And there we go. We have a, a beautiful uh, boundary fit application here where we were able to quickly create a aftermarket hood scoop here by drawing directly on the scan data and working with it. 